Hey everyone. Okay, I know I like old machines, but unfortunately at the moment, I gotta deal with what I got. So, we're gonna do some maintenance on this. 2009 MacBook Pro. 2.8 gigahertz Core 2 Duo processor, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and a 240 gig uh, SSD drive. This is the much coveted 17 inch model. As you see, this thing is flipping huge. Guys, if you ever want a good MacBook Pro and you don't want to deal with the new crap, there you go. One of the best machines I've probably ever had. So, it's an all aluminum unibody design. Really good machine. You know, it's not the most powerful performer, but it's, it holds its own pretty well. So, today we're going to do a couple maintenance items. Mostly we're going to repaste the, um, the processors. Well, the processor, excuse me. So, first thing we're going to do is log into the machine. And we're going to try to get this thing to warm up. So, at the moment, you'll take notice that the fans are actually full bore. So we're going to go back down to system. We're going to let the computer take over fan control. Which I'm not sure why it was on manual to begin with, but we're going to uh, see if we can get the uh, fan speed back down here. And then apparently the computer is at the moment, for some reason, demanding that the fans be on full blast, and I don't know why. So, let's just manually turn them down. So, I got them down to about 2600, 2700 RPMs right now. And, uh, as you'll see, uh, it's kind of hard to tell, but, uh, Oh, sorry about the zoom issues, guys. So, it's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to point it out. So, our processor itself is in 42C, which for this computer is actually cold. Um, the GPU is running between 35 and 40C, and the proximity is 38. So, uh, it's not a... It's actually not hot at the moment. Um, I've actually used this computer where I've actually had these temperatures spike up to 100 C already. So, which is 212 Fahrenheit, which is borderline burning up. So, I was told by my buddy Jay that this is his old computer, so he told me that it's probably due for thermal repasting. However, this computer is known for running hot, so... Uh, Core 2 Duos are not exactly known for their cool running, so um, this is running uh, 10.13, 10, 10 uh, uh, it's running High Sierra. I did actually have Catalina on this at one time, and actually I took that off because it was horrible. Uh, the computer ran fine, I just, uh, I'm just not crazy about the whole, all these updates, especially with the APFS and stuff, so... I took that off and uh, reformatted the hard drive and uh, we're running High Sierra again. So this actually matches my Mac Pro that I use on a daily basis. So but what we're going to do is see if we can uh, see if we can find something on here that will actually uh, make this thing uh, work hard. I got the Surefire Layer. Let's run Windows. I'm not sure if I even saw Windows on here or not. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. So, 
So instead of using boot camp, I use a program called Parallels. Um, I, ref I prefer this because this uh, gives me basically it's it's, a, it's an emulator, but it's Windows and a Mac. But on an Intel machine, it works great because of the Intel architecture. So. Um, I find that Parallels running Windows 7 is actually almost as fast as just running Windows 7 on a normal PC. Um, and I can swap files back and forth between the Mac and the Windows with no issue. So, um, so, now, as we can see right now, okay, this is why I like parallels. Now our CPU is up to, it was up to 60, which is still not very hot for this computer. Uh, 80 is hot. Uh, anything over 80 is obnoxious. So, um, you know, if we, if we set the fans back to system, you know, the computer will monitor will take care of the fans and keep everything cool so but uh we're going to see if we can lower this at all i'm not going to i'm not really holding my breath uh, but we're going to see what happens so and the other thing is too now this computer is running off a battery this is not plugged in this, this has a full charge so the computer's running stro solely off a battery at the moment so um i should get about three hours out of a battery in this so, but what we're going to do is we're going to shut the computer down because we're going to be taking the battery out. Oops. This is assuming we can get it to actually... There we go. So the next thing you're going to see me do is tear the machine apart, which is not very difficult on these, these older MacBooks. So, we'll go from there. Now you can see we're inside the computer. So, just a few things of note. Super drive, battery, hard drive, or in my case an SSD, memory, it's right here. Got two fans that control that are controlled by the computer. Both of these are actually pretty clean. There's a uh, expansion card bay here, and of course the whole logic board. So but what we need to do is we need to pull the logic board out, which is actually not too hard in this machine. So we're going to do that now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take I'm going to take the battery out just to make room for us. Um, other than the battery, I'm not taking anything else out. So now this computer uses tri-wing screws on the battery because the battery is not supposed to be user replaceable. So the next thing. We need to do is get our tri-wing tip out, which I'm pretty sure I got one here. I hope I have one. Oh well, this might be interesting. They don't seem to have a proper tri-wing tip. So we might have to try something different. Okay. So I can't, I don't have the appropriate tri-wing tip, so we're going to have to try 
just using a flathead screwdriver and we'll see how that works. If that doesn't work, this might be a very short video. So, stay tuned. All right, thankfully, Buddy J did not screw the battery in super, super tight, so it was not an issue to get that out. So, now when you take the battery out, as you see, now you got access to the trackpad here. So, and there's a screw down here, you can adjust the uh, reactiveness, I guess, of the trackpad. So, next we're going to take the RAM out. This machine has, came with 512 megs from the factory, and I have 8 gigabytes in it. So... Um, this is the max for this machine, uh, at least that I'm aware of. So it's uh, just uh, two 4 gig PC8500 memory. So um, actually I bought these at Best Buy. They're pretty cheap and they're readily available on the shelf, which is actually kind of surprising, um, as old as it is. So now the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to disconnect this is a uh, part of the display right here, so we're going to disconnect this, and we are going to disconnect. Oops, this one maybe. <laughs> I can remember how to get it out. There we go. They use such tiny connectors on this thing. So, and then we got two connectors down here, which if I remember correctly, I think one is the keyboard, and this is the expansion card and the hard drive uh, underneath this small little frame. We do not need to take the optical drive out. Uh, one um, option some people opt to do on this machine is take the optical drive out and replace it with a second hard drive. I have not done that because I actually watch DVDs on this from time to time. So uh, I very rarely use optical media in general, but uh, it's nice to be able to watch a movie when, especially when you're not at home. So okay. So there's the trackpad. And I'm pretty sure that if that's the trackpad, then that's going to be the keyboard. Oh, we also need to disconnect the optical drive interface right there. And this is a SATA drive, uh, if anybody's wondering. Uh, it just uses a proprietary interface, you know, because of Apple. So, and then now we need to disconnect these. And it looks to me like uh, one of them goes to the battery status indicator. One is the actual hard drive, which is a standard SATA hard drive. And I don't have the bracket to hold this thing in, so... And then this one here is the uh, expansion, the card bus connector. I think that's what they, I can't remember what they call this thing. It's something that pretty much only Apple used. Uh, Express card. So, and I do have a, I have an SD card reader for it. So, so we're just going to disconnect these. Gently. And you got to be really gentle with these connectors because they can, things can go to hell in a handbasket. So, at this point in time, we should be ready to take the logic board out of the computer. Oh, we've got one more connector right here. Uh, not exactly, I think that's the speakers. So, 
But uh, so now that everything appears to be disconnected, we're just going to double check. And the only things that are connected is fans, which I think the fans will come out with it. So, and just FYI, this is not a how-to video. I, I've never done this before. So, um, I said don't suggest doing this with your own stuff unless you know what the crap you're doing. So, we're going to take the logic board out now and go from there. So as everybody can see, now I got the logic board out. Wasn't too hard. I found out you don't actually have to take the fans out, but I did anyway on the one side. This one here, I couldn't get out because the one uh, connector for the fan, the one screw is actually has a stripped head on it, which it was like that when I got it. So, not a big deal. I mean, if I don't have to take the fans out, so much the better. Now we're just gonna do some cleanup, clean some dust out. So, now, as you see, we have this big, big heat pipe assembly. So, this is covering up both graphic chips, and yes, I said both. This actually has two separate video chips in it. It has um, one NVIDIA chip for the display, and then it actually has a secondary one, which uses uh, the, the DDR3 memory for the external display. So, it actually has two full-fledged graphics cards in it. So, and then the Core 2 Duo is, should be under this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the heat pipes off, and they're just held on with Phillips screws, and we're going to pull everything off gently.
cut the heat pipe off so we can clean that up. And there's a, I didn't realize it, but there's a temperature sensor on, it's actually on the heat pipe, which is kind of cool. So, but as you can see, the uh, thermal paste isn't horrible in this, but it's definitely, definitely needs to be redone. It's starting to solidify. And like I said, as I, as I told everybody before, this is not a how-to video. I am not going to show you how to do it. I'm just showing you that it's be, it can be done and it should be done very, uh, I shouldn't say often, but on a fairly regular basis, you know. Because these, these things run very, very hot. So, Core 2 Duo chips were notorious for, for being extremely hot running chips. So, and this machine has NVIDIA graphics on it, not ATI, which is actually kind of surprising. Uh, but then again, at the time, uh, AMD, well, it was still actually ATI, uh, wasn't really making... They didn't really have real good uh, mobile graphic chip options, so which is probably one of the reasons that Apple went with NVIDIA in this case. So, which uh, Apple doesn't support any NVIDIA chips anymore. So, I've never been an NVIDIA fan, but you know, I take what I got. So. All we're going to do is we're just going to clean all this up with alcohol. Make it all nice and shiny. And same thing with the heat pipe here. We're going to clean all these copper pads off. And when you work with these heat pipes, you got to be careful not to apply any excessive force on these because these are just copper. It's very, very soft. These are very easy to bend out of shape. So, And that goes for any of them, not just this particular computer. So, but actually could have did a better job at that. I just like to make sure all the thermal paste is off. So there's no interference problems. So, you got one, two NVIDIA chips. This is the primary, this is the secondary. This runs the external monitor. And then the Core 2 Duo. And as you see, it's a 2.8 gigahertz with six megs of uh, cache, which is actually pretty, pretty impressive. So a twin, tw dual core processor, of course, Core 2 Duo. Whoops, I'm turning it upside down. So, Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some paste on, put the heat sink back, or put the heat pipes back on.
So now we're going to put the logic board back in. Okay, so got everything buttoned up, fans in, all the connectors are connected. So right now we're going to put the memory in. And like I said before, this is 8 gigabytes of DDR3, two 4 gig sticks. To my knowledge, this is the max that this computer can handle. If it could do 16, that'd be awesome, but I doubt that. So there's the memory. And now we got this humongous honking battery I mean, look at the size of this thing and uh this is an actual real this is a original battery for this computer so in case anybody's wondering and as everybody took notice i did not heed the warning of not removing the battery And once again, these this uses tri-wing screws, which I never realized, but I don't have the proper bit for. So we're just going to have to make do with what we do have. All right, so all that's left now is to put the back cover on. And then we'll reboot this computer.
All right, so we got it all back together. Now we're gonna see if it boots. Yay! I don't know why it's so delayed, but... And I don't know why it double chimes, but it has always done that. <clears throat> and you can see how fast High Sierra boots on this thing. It's pretty perky. The uh, internal video card is 256 megs, uh, and the uh, external video card is 256 megs of shared DDR memory. It takes it out of the main memory pool if you need to use it. Okay, we're going to log into the computer. Mm, everything seems to be working. I don't know why the keyboard won't light up. It might be because I have a light shining directly on it. I don't know why TG Pro is not starting when I boot the computer. Everything else is. So, well, this isn't good. Our CPU is running at 75 degrees. And for some reason, the computer is not boosting the fans to cool it down. So we're going to boost the fans up, and we're going to see what happens. Oh, well, it's running about... It's down to about 70 degrees now, so which isn't too too bad for a Core 2 Duo. That's actually that's about normal. So uh, on average, the computer is 48 degrees. Um, but the computer is running the the actual CPU itself is running about 70 between 70 and 75. Um, now I have this thing set to full bore even on the battery, so uh, it'll drain the battery in about two and a half hours, depending on what I'm doing. Um, I can throttle it down and, and make it run cooler, but you know then you lose the performance. So, and uh, most of the stuff that I do, I like to have the performance um, versus the uh, the power savings because I'm never too far away from an outlet, so. But, uh, yeah, as you see, I mean, it's holding around 70. Uh, the fans are coming on when they need to now. TG Pro's taking over the uh, control of the fans. <clears throat> so when it gets up to, when it gets over 70 degrees too far, then it kicks the fans on, and then it throttles them back, then it kicks them on, throttles them back, you know. So, I mean, we can, we can kick it on manual. And we can kick these suckers all the way up.
And I think they top out at 5,600, 5,700. And uh, even with the fans maxed out, the processor's still running a bit on the hot side. It's still running in the high 60s. So, um, the hit you're going to take with the fans running on full bore versus, you know, letting the computer take care of it, it's going to be pretty negligible. So, you know, it is what it is. It's a MacBook Pro. They're known for running hot. They always run hot. It's just the way they are. So, if you have any questions or comments about what you see in this video, feel free to leave a comment below. And we'll see you next time.